In this issue of Real Magic Magazine, Wayne Kawamoto talks with comedian and magician Steve Spill about growing up at the Magic Castle and where he comes up with all of his off-the-wall ideas. Starting way back, uh, I used to see Vernon make notations in his notebook. So any time that I had an idea throughout my life, I would jot it down on a piece of paper, the back of a matchbook or a cocktail napkin, or I would kept different notebooks, and I would throw them in a drawer, and I had a little shopping bag full of them. I have stacks of notebooks at home. And every once in a while, I would just grab one. I one time jotted down, this is 30 years ago, the Russian roulette, but with nine. So I started working on that, and I thought, you know, in the regular Russian roulette, there's one bullet in the chamber and, and five empty chambers. I'm thinking, what if there was five bullets in one empty chamber? So anyway, I, from that I kind of thought, oh, you know, uh, I could have five real knives and one fake one that goes in the handle there. Now each of these knives has been fitted with a long, sharp-edged metal blade, and each of these knives is a deadly weapon. Now I'm going to have someone in front hold on to these so you'd be certain that they are real. And uh, you see, would you stand up for just a second? You look like you might be familiar with knives. Uh, <laughs> And uh, as you look at them, um, you'll notice evidence of things like epoxy glue and tape. That's because I made these knives myself, and the reason I made them myself is I wanted them to look like this one right here. Now, although this pointed weapon is the same size and weight as the others, it won't stick into the wood and it doesn't cut because it has a phony blade, allows you to do stuff like this. Ooh! That one's always a crowd pleaser, I don't know. It's just, uh... I have uh, one other prop, and that's this bag. If you would, I'd like you to drop the knives into the bag one at a time. Please don't drop them in point first. Here we go. That's one, two, three, yeah. four knives with long, sharp-edged metal blades. One phony one. See if you can keep your eye on the phony knife. The name of this game is Grab and Stab. <laughs> also in issue 47, Christian Painter returns with a mind-tripping routine based on Tony Corinda's The Third Choice. Being married, we suddenly learned that we can't make decisions that are correct. You know what I mean? It's, it happens all the time. Like for instance, when I tell my wife, you know, hey, let's go out to eat. And she goes, great, you can pick. And I said, great, um, let's go to uh, McDonald's. And she goes, no, you're wrong. I'm like, well, I thought, I thought I got to pick. Well, you did, but you picked wrong. I'm like, huh. So we're gonna have we're gonna we're gonna play with that concept with this. Now first, I have to tell you, this is this was my wife's choice right here, right? And we'll place that here and put it over there. But now I'll show you. Here's the choices I had. This is the choices I had, and I wrote them on these little cards here, and they are Taco Bell. I like Taco. Bell. You know, I know which I like in Taco Bell, but I don't remember what it is. I have to see the menu because it's just a. I don't know. I don't remember what it is. They have fancy words for meat in a in a in a thing. Right in a taco shop, and then Burger King. That's a go. You know why? Of course. I like it better because they don't grill the meat. They they uh, well, they broil. Plain broiled. That's what right. it's better than the McDonald's ones. That, yeah, but the McDonald's fries are better. Right. And then you got Wendy's. I already know this is number two. Ketchup only. A root beer to drink. KFC. I like the little bowl. The little bowl. Nice. Not the chicken. Yeah. I'm, don't give me the original. Is great, but I like the bowl. And then Arby's. And I always overeat at Arby's because I get two of the beef cheddars and then the Pizza Hut, right? And so here's what we're going to do is I'm going to take these and we'll just put them right here in the old envelopes like this. And the reason is, is that way you don't think that they're marked or anything like this, right? So we're just going to put them all. Takes a while, but hey, we got nothing but time. All right, here we go. Perfect. Now, here's what's going to happen. You mix them. Yeah, give them a little mix. Right. Now, you're going to play the part of me first, right? Okay. So uh, you're going to pick three of them. Throw them down here, but you don't get to, but you, we won't use those because that's the wrong decision. So go ahead. Yeah. So you're just being a male and you're picking three, and those, you're wrong, right? You're, you're wrong. I'm just letting you know you're wrong. And here's the stuff we could have picked, right? We could have had Wendy's, that's my favorite, but that's fine. And now you're going to pick one. Just give me one. This is it. Okay. Now, remember, I said that my wife's choice was over there. Go ahead and, and pull that one out because what you, you grabbed Pizza Hut, and of course, in there, was my wife's choice, which was Pizza Hut. That's simple. John Armstrong discusses how to create emotional hooks. Doc Eason demonstrates the importance of pauses. 
and Garrett Thomas encourages you to try a new strategy for organizing your effects. By organizing your effects by topic, it gives you a lot more freedom to improv your plot. Like a trick like Stand Up Monty, I can perform as a challenge, you know, I can perform it as an illusion, I can perform it as a gambling plot, I can perform it for kids and just find the queen, find the queen, I can make it funny and I can have fun with it, or I can get serious. Because of all the different plots that I have based on topic, I know that I want to focus on different elements. So with, with putting them in these different categories, it's trained me to be in the moment. It's trained me to listen to my audience. And it, it, I mean, it tricks you. It tricks you into feeling where you want it to go. Now the trick is still the same. The, the queen's gonna jump from their hand to mine. But whether it's because of I'm really fast, or whether it's because I cast a spell, or whether it's because they're delusional, depends on what their interest is. As always, we've got three tricks to teach you. In this issue, they're from Steve Spill and two from rubber band black belt Joe Rendeflesh. I'll take this one and get rid of it. And I'll take another rubber band. This one right here. Just give a little shake and it turns into a yellow band. It's the best deal in magic today.